Hey there, Fava TV community. It's Gabby with Fava TV. And today we have an awesome special guest for a very awesome day today. Today we are providing you a live free class from Faba TV. But for those that will be missing this live, it will be on the Faba TV library sometime, hopefully this week. The promo I just showed you is from Elizabeth Gale, who we have today right now backstage. And she has several fantastic classes on Faba TV. And now that Halloween is just around the corner, you know, the busiest time of the year for face painters. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to Faba TV, I recommend it at least just for the Halloween season so you can really bump up your game this season. People are really starting to paint. They're getting serious. And before we get maybe another wave, you want to really practice your face painting on people instead of a practice board to nail it for the rest of the year. So if you're not subscribed to Faba TV, I recommend it again, at least just for the Halloween season, because right now, backstage with me, we are going to show you an awesome arm design and possibly a Halloween design for the season to get the chills, you know, get a little spooky. I am incredibly excited for the um, pumpkin spice lattes and watching all the Halloween movies like Hocus Pocus, probably one of the most iconic and maybe one of my favorite Halloween movies next to Beetlejuice. Oh, they're so good. With all that being said, let's bring in our extra special guest, Miss Elizabeth Gale. How are you, Elizabeth? Oh, I'm good. Hi, guys. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Very excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for doing a live. Now, we know live classes can be a lot harder than the ones that are pre-recorded just because if you mess up yeah. you gotta wipe it and do it again you know <laughs> when you record it no one has to see all the little mess up so i just want you to feel relaxed you know we we all make a little oopsies here and there and especially when it's live it can be a little bit nerve-wracking but i'm gonna be with here here with you the whole time so you don't have to worry amazing thank you yeah this is the first time i've done anything live so yeah i'm a little bit nervous but i'm gonna go for it you're right <laughs> you're gonna do so good and i have two questions for you one where are you located what what part of the world do you live in so i live in surrey in the uk so right down south at the bottom of the uk and what classes are you going to be teaching or what designs so, are you going to be teaching Okay, so I well, since I've been going back painting, I've been doing a lot of arm painting. And if you, I don't know if anybody's had a look at anything I've done, but on my Instagram, I've got lots of arm painting ideas, which I love to do. So I'm going to be painting, it's going to be a, well, we've called, this is my daughter, Layla. <laughs> I'm going to paint her arm today. And uh, we're going to be painting like a Halloween fall uh, flower design that sort of goes right down the arm. And oh, gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> it's gonna be. I'm awesome. gonna have a little Halloween twist at the end, maybe. We'll see. Ooh, well, for people that don't know Elizabeth, I 100% recommend that you follow her on Instagram. She really does have fantastic arm designs, especially for these moments when you might be a little bit hesitant to paint on the face, or for kids that don't want their face painted. Knowing how to paint arm designs is so important, and for me like I'm guilty I don't like painting arm designs I'm actually so bad at it so I'm I'm extra excited for this particular class um so let's go ahead and let's just dive into it okay cool so I'm gonna switch with uh my daughter so I got it on well I just changed my camera around so later you can come sit super cute my lovely model for the day just get my camera down okay so I mean, you can see everything. Is that low enough? Hold on. I'm going to be putting on my glasses to read um, the comments. We have Gillian Child, Amanda, Emma. Oh, how hi, are hi, you guys hi, doing Emma. it? Hi there. And hi, Deborah. Hi. Well, people from the UK, lots of my Ooh. friends. <laughs> oh, and uh, the, a big reason to why I asked you where you're located is because, you know, on Faba TV in the library, we have almost 200 international artists. So I think having that kind of diversity really changes the way 
people work if that makes sense like each country has a slightly different style and you know faba tv is one of the biggest face paint libraries in the world so i think having all these artists from all over the world uh make make it so unique what supplies are you going to be using today so yeah so i'm going to use my standard black and white dfx for dots and like highlights and a bit of line work and then my favorite so this is not my BAM stencil, but this is BAM stencil, so it's a similar one um, with some starbursts, which I love to use. And I've got two one-stroke cakes. So they're both DFX. Uh, this is Cucumber Rage, which is quite a cool whoop, quite cool name. And this one is Autumn, also DFX. And then I've got two uh, superstar colours, so just a regular orange and a brown. So Nice. And for those for that are watching this live, if you guys have any questions, please go ahead and ask them so that we can address them as soon as they pop up because you're not going to get this opportunity just casually watching a pre-recorded video, you know what I mean? So take take this opportunity to ask questions. So Deborah yeah. says, um, how about addressing the pandemic and painting? That's a good question. You know what? Maybe we'll talk about it as the design, as the video yeah. progresses. Cool. Okay. Right, so I'm going to start with um, my one stroke, which is the autumn colour and finger dauber. I'm just going to spray, I've got my jazzy little spritzer thing. So I'm going to just going to spray my cake and I'm going to pick up, whoop, I'm going to pick up the, obviously they want the red colour, the orange and the yellow. So you just drag it across. There. You can see okay, can you see okay? Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, cool. So you've got all three colours on there. And then we're going to start. So I want the design to go all the way up. And so you could do it on this part of the arm or it look, it'd look really cool, like on the shoulder down. You can even adapt it to sort of on the chest if you wanted. So we're going to start there. So I'm just going to, I want the yellow to be at the top. So that's going to be the highlighted part. Mm. So and Amanda's asking, you know, your line work is always so crisp and clean. What's your favorite <laughs> line work brush? So thank you, Amanda. So um, I love, so I'm going to be using this. This is my local now, number two, which I love. Um, but I'm pr proud of myself because I've progressed on to a number three as well. <laughs> nice. So I had one point where I could, all I could use was two. But now I'm, I'm yeah, more confident with a three. So Right. So I've done one there and then I'm going to do another one. Just up a little bit there. And you can just press it down and then twist it a little bit so you get a little almost like round, squidgy, smudgy effect. And then another one at the top there. Okay. Just like that. Nice. Right. And then I'm going to use this. So this is, um, I've just recently discovered this brush and it's brilliant. So this is the Paint Pal Teardrop and it makes great petals for daisies and um, flowers and really good for little faces as well. So if you want to do flowers on little faces when they've got a tiny gap by their eye, I find this is much better than some of the, the bigger ones that I was using. So I'm going to dip it in my DFX um, white. And swirl it around so you get a nice point and it holds quite a lot of paint in this brush it's great but it doesn't get too watery at the same time and, there. and then take a little bit off on the towel and then go into the orange Ooh. pick up a bit of the orange but not too much don't want it to go too far I still want quite a lot of the white on there and then just spray my black and then the tiniest oh, little bit off and then the tiniest bit on oh, the black wow. as well so you can kind of see is three but you only want a tiny bit of black you don't want too much right you can always go back in so just going to press down so it makes really nice petals oh my gosh very pretty all the way around you should get enough out of this to do one flower. So there's a little bit of reloading. <laughs> and you can go back in and pick up a little bit of black if you're running out. That looks really nice. Thank you. 
I have a tendency to stop talking when I'm concentrating. So <laughs> no, you're you're fine. You're fine. Um, how for people that might be new face painters, how would you help them explain how to evenly distribute the petals? Because you do it so beautifully. Oh, thank you. So yeah, you want. I think you want your bigger ones at the bottom. So you're kind of looking at it from an angle. So your bigger ones would, if you were looking at a flower, your bigger ones would be coming out at the bottom and then the smaller ones at the top. So it almost, I mean, I'm no expert at these kind of things, but <laughs> I just think it looks better that way. It just seems to. Yeah. Kind of like a depth of field is very yeah. interesting. Yeah, I guess so. So I'm going to load it up again, exactly the same as before. Wipe a bit off. I don't, I don't even find I need to put any water in the color because sometimes it gets too, too wet and you get too much of the color. You only want like, cause you only want a little bit like a little, um, hint that there's a bit of colour on there and then into the black again. So we're going to do the same on this one. Oh, there we go. See, too much black. <laughs> That's what happens when it's live. <laughs> right. But it, <laughs> but it also makes it look real. I mean, this happens to us all the time, especially when we're working. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, all the time. <laughs> so I, I think it's good that you can able to show us how to fix it. Okay, try that one. Out. So sometimes it's better to try it on your arm. It'd be better. Mm. Hold on. Okay. Don't panic. <laughs> that looks good. And Liz, how long have you been painting for? So I've been painting for about eight years. And wow. I started doing it for Layla's fourth birthday <laughs> and we wanted a face painter and we couldn't find one. So my friend said, you're quite arty. You have a go. How how hard can it be? And I thought, yeah, it's quite <laughs> easy. But like, yeah, no, <laughs> it was not. No, I think people that change from like a regular artist medium, like maybe painting on a canvas with acrylic paints to going to face painting. They're like, yeah, it's super easy. And it's really hard to do that kind of transition. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You're kind of yeah. painting at a different angle, aren't you? You're kind of painting like that when you paint. And then when you're doing the faces, your arm goes up and you're yeah, painting and, a different angle. And not just that, but you literally only have like five minutes max to paint a masterpiece because people don't yeah. sit still for that long. <laughs> no, they don't sit still. <laughs> Right. And then, so I'll just wait for that one that I messed up there to dry and then I'll go back over that. So, um, and then we're going to do this one as well. So it's fairly quick. If you're not, if you're just getting on with it, you can just press these down really quick when you're out painting at a party or whatever. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, are you, are you currently painting in the UK? Yeah. Yeah, really busy, which is really good. Oh, um, that's awesome. So, because Deborah's asking, <laughs> when, when, when it's coming to, you know, the pandemic that we've had for, I don't know how long now, how do you balance the two, face painting and the pandemic? Like, what, are you taking any kind of precautions or sanita sanitation tools or you're kind of just, like, going for it? No. Because everyone's so, vaccinated. <laughs> yeah, I am going for it because I need the money, but <laughs> um, uh, I'm... So I have three pots of water um, and then a pot of alcohol rinse and uh, like the brush bath, um, the Silly Farm brush bath, I use that in one oh, pot. I love it. Oh so well, I, and I have like 100 brushes and I just take loads of brushes with me. So if I'm doing, at the moment I'm using the same brush and I'm going back in, but these are the paints that I have at home all the time that I use on my kids and me. Mm -hmm. um, but if, so there's no double dipping when you're out um, painting at parties. Um, back into the paint and I make sure that you know one sponge per child one dobber as soon as it's been used it goes in the in my wash tub and um, let's go back over that one there we go that's better yeah that makes sense I think a, a thing that a lot of us are doing just out of fear you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> spread anything um Dominique's in the house hey girl how hey, are you Dominique. doing hi <laughs> Thanks for watching. Woo. So now I'm going to be using this um, green and cake. And it's this is the Cucumber Rage from DFX. And I like this one because I'm trying to go for a sort of autumnal 
sort of dying leaf look, <laughs> if you like. So I'm picking up this dark colour into this sort of, I think it's like a goldy colour, and then it goes into the green. So it makes quite a nice. Um, and what there. brush so are just, you using? So yeah, sorry, I'm using a half inch angle brush. And it's quite nice. This it, I just find doing things like this with these smaller brushes easier. You can control them much easier. And they've got like, they're quite nice and fine on the end. So you get a nice point on them. So I'm just loading that up really well like that. So if I was out on the job at the moment with COVID, I would use this brush, load it up, paint what I could. And then that brush would have to go and be washed, cleaned, and then I'd let it dry. Um, and then I'd pick up another half inch brush and load it up to go oh, back wow. in again. So I'm not, so you see, you're not going back in the paint um, after you touch the customer. So I'm going to start at the top here and I'm starting on the tip of the brush and you're just pressing it down and then dragging it down and ending on the top like that. That so color everything is pretty. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Um, and it's all going to end up, so it's kind of got a, I can't really explain it, but it's got a lot of flow to it. So it, all these bits are going to end up coming into this point here and then these are going to come into this point here and then when I do them down here, they'll go. So they kind of go like that, if that makes sense. So you do another one here, press them down, and finishing on the tip like that. In fact, I might make that one a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. And then I'm going to do one this side, so move it on sweet. Make sure it's nice and flat. So yeah, make sure it's nice and um, flat when you do it. Not all funny shape like I just had it. And then it goes in like that. And a little one in there. And then I'm going to do the stalk coming down. So goes down to a point and then one coming in and they just turn the brush so it instead of going in like that it looks better mm. I think if you go in so it's pointing so it's going with the flow oh, if that makes sense <laughs> yeah 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 no it's, it, it does it does it does make sense okay okay and then one this side as well pressing down and then Beautiful. Okay. So I'm gonna do some I'm gonna do some line work over the top as well to kind of emphasize the swirl bit. Doing doing the big petals at the bottom and the small petals at the top, uh it really, you know, I've never painted that before and I think it does a beautiful difference. Like I really like how it looks. Yeah, and it fills the whole arm up. So I think People, if they if they want their arms painted, they kind of want the whole they want the whole arm <laughs> rather than it. And it's and it's easier to do bigger patterns than tiny little. Um, oh, I know. Like when someone asks for like a, like a face, and I'm thinking, please don't ask me this. That's so hard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> eyes are really hard. I got my friend to make me a, um, a friend Lily to make me some eye stencils, and they're just so much easier to stamp the eye stencils down and spend ages doing. Yeah, oh, yeah. Stuff. So right, so I'm using this. Um, this is a superstar. I think it's just brown, and a number two brush. And I'm just loading it up and then swirling it in the paint. So you've got a nice sharp point. And it's going to add a bit of depth to these flowers. So in between where you've done the petals, you're just going to press and pull in between. So in between each the, one. Yeah. And the, you can do it quite quickly. It doesn't have to be perfect. And if you were doing this and you were really up against it with time, you could just, you could leave this bit out or you could just do this bit and then not do the next bit. But it adds a bit of depth to the flowers. Um, okay. Around. Mm -hmm. Such a small detail makes a really big difference. Yeah. 
and quite a lot recently. I did it on my daughters on my Instagram, um, and I've also done quite a few sort of adult face painting jobs recently for uh, like big parties. I think everybody just wants to get back out and party. <laughs> Um, where I've done daisies around the eye so you can just do a big daisy like this and then use a daisy stencil to do either side and that looks really good with these sort of petals going around the eye so you can adapt it to do eye designs as well and Liz what's your Instagram uh, it's sparkle face underscore face painting Hold on a minute. I'll decide what I'm going to do next. Right. <laughs> so now I'm going to use my uh, stencil. I love this stencil. I have like four of these and it's I just use them on everything. So I'm going to spray my cake and then load up this DFX white. Um, and you kind of, when you do it, you can hear that weird noise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tacky noise and that's what you want you don't want it too runny too wet and then if you've got that noise um when you do the stencil it makes a perfectly crisp stencil mark so th can you see that yet so i'm gonna just gonna put that down there and then peel it off and it makes it nice and neat and do one at the top and there And if you do it in this order, then everything's had a chance to dry. So quite often I'll do things when I'm out painting and I haven't done it in the right order and I'll do these and then I'll do the stencil over top and then it will lift off this green and you're like, oh, it's all sorts of mess. <laughs> so <laughs> I know what you mean. Stencils can be like the bane of my existence sometimes yeah. when I'm not when I'm not smart and I'm not thinking. I'm <laughs> you mess up the whole design. Yeah, I love them. They're brilliant. But yeah, they can. You can completely ruin it at the end. <laughs> I'm just going to do a little one at the top. There. Looks really nice. Okay. Right, I'll stop there for a minute. I can always do like, some more later. Okay. And then I've got my number two brush again. And I'm just going to pick up some more black, DFX black. And you could leave this step off as well, but I'm just going to put a little bit of black around the edge here and you can just add a bit more depth again and you're adding mini dots yeah just little dots all the way around so you're just creating it's just making it a bit darker around where it would naturally be darker and then the lighter color on the top where the light would shine i'm no expert but this is just how i do it <laughs> Yeah, it looks good. It just makes it pop a bit more, I think. And then you can just do some little ones and just tidy that up around the top. All right, Layla, draw. I'm getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting some chocolate at the end of this. She's a good little model. <laughs> the best way I to find out. Yeah, yeah. I can paint it on my arm, but doing stencils on your own arm is quite tricky. Yeah, it so is. It's nice to have somebody else to paint on. Okay, and then while I've got the black out, and just loaded it up normally, and then I just wipe a bit off so it's quite, it's almost dry, so you're not going to bleed over this white. And then just tiny little scoop round. You don't have to go around each petal. It just makes them, just tidies them up a bit. And if you're only doing one flower on like an eye design or something, this wouldn't take you very long at all. So my, my question would be, why are you using black to outline the petals and not brown like you had done a little bit uh, prior? Um, yeah, you could do, but it just makes it, it just for, just for me, it makes it stand out a bit more. Just okay. makes them, um, you could use brown, I guess. No, I was just asking out there. That's <laughs> I <was> right. Just... <laughs> I might try brown next time and see if it looks any better. <laughs> 
So someone asks, and I want to say hi to Terry and uh, Saki, but someone asks a Facebook user, for those that are watching this on Facebook, allow StreamYard access so I can read your name directly. But they said, would you always paint on the inside of the arm? I typically paint on the outside as I'm always afraid <laughs> the paint will run off, but hair always gets in the way. Yeah, so usually I look at the child's arm. So I was trying to turn it over, but yeah, Layla's got a fair amount of, no offense, Layla. <laughs> She's looking at me horrified. If she's got, like me, I've got quite hairy arms. So I would, if the child's got quite a lot of hair, I'll, well, I would paint on this side because it's just smooth and it's just nicer to paint on. But if they haven't, some kids haven't got anything or people haven't got anything on the other side, then yeah, I'd paint on the other side. But Okay. Um, so it just depends then, on the person. Yeah. And then the show, and then like on the shoulder as well. Um, that's usually smoother to paint on. So you could do that as well. So just around the edges there. Thank you. Someone said, beautiful technique. Thank you, Elizabeth. Always get asked for sunflowers. Oh, I thank agree. you. Yeah, you could, yeah, these could be, uh, oops. You could just do these yellow and then, yeah, with the sunflowers, sometimes I've done them where I do the middle yellow and then dip the white petals into blue. And that looks really nice with sunflower colours. Mm. Okay. So just something like that. Right. Uh, now? Right. So I've got my um, number two brush again. And I'm going to do a bit of line work to while they're drying to sort of connect this up so I'm going to go so oh, now I am using the brown <laughs> I'm not going to use black <laughs> <laughs> um, just load it up really well and then turn the brush in the paint Ooh. all right Layla to so you've got a nice point on it and then I'm going to start at the top I've got the paint on my fingers and then I'm not going too high now pressing down and I want everything to come into this point here. So I'm pressing down, pulling it in, and then dragging it through. So a bit, a bit more. And if you're painting this on the job, how long do you think this design would take you? Probably, it'd probably take me about five or six minutes. I wouldn't, perhaps I wouldn't do some of the details that I'm doing now. Um, or if I was doing it and I design, I would only probably only do like one flower. And then mm -hmm. like a stencil, I've got some flower stencil uh, daisies that I do either side, a few leaves. And yeah, it wouldn't take me longer than if I was doing that as an eye design, it'd probably take me about four or five minutes. Nice. Coming down like that. So they're all bending down that way. Like that. And I'm going to connect them up a little bit. And then do one there. Oh, that bit fat, never mind. There we go. And then one, so I've got a gap there, so I'm going to fill that gap. Press it down and then drag it in. And then because I've got a, um, what do you call it, like a spider webby bit there, I'm going to do one coming down there. So you don't want them next to each other. You want mm. them, I don't know what the word is. Spread about, yeah, thank you, Lena. <laughs> so that's that one. I'm going to do a few this side. And again, they're going to be pointing in that way, like that. And then I might do one going the other way, but still pointing that way. Connect them up like that. And then same this side. Same And then going here into that area. And then pointing down so it all points down to the bottom part. Very pretty. So just 
a load of teardrops really and then connecting them up with like i like to do the web bit really thin so a thicker teardrop and then a thin web i'm not really sure why just i just think it looks better <laughs> And if you guys are enjoying this video, make sure to like it if you're watching it on Facebook or on YouTube. And definitely follow Elizabeth on Instagram. Her Instagram is right here, sparkleface underscore face painting. She has some very delicate yet beautiful face paint designs on her channel. And she's also an instructor on Fabba TV. So if you're not subscribed to Fabba TV, like I said at the beginning, at least do it for Halloween season so that you can really bump up your game. She has a fantastic class on arm designs that are all Halloween themed. And let me tell you how beautiful they are. And they would be an absolute <laughs> hit at a party that you... Thank you. Right. And then I'm going to do... What, so now this is all dried. I'm going to load up some DFX white. Uh, using the same brush, I'm swirling it around. And then I always like to do my highlights. So a dot and then a scoop around like that. In there. Just brings them to life a bit, I think. Make them. Makes them appear more curvy. They look a bit like eggs. <laughs> <Almost>. <laughs> it's not what I'm going for, but <laughs> just occurred to me. Now okay. now I can't unsee it. Now I just see yeah. egg yolks. <laughs> I shouldn't have said it. I should have kept quiet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, and then the last bit, well, before we finish, um, and I've got number four brush. So this number four is brilliant for doing dots. And I always like to put a few white dots on. So you want the paint really gloopy. Um, you can see it's quite runny. And then I'm just going to do a few dots. So the dots are brilliant for hiding. So where they, if you wanted to hide areas where you've done the one stroke where it comes in, it's a bit messy. So just two dots. And I like to do them faded down. That's Into a great advice. Always odd numbers as well. Okay, like that. There we go. And maybe a few there. I'll just do three there. There we go. So that's kind of it, really. But my daughter has a request for this. <laughs> she oh, said, yeah? You need to make it more Halloween. <laughs> so she says I should put little Halloween faces in the flowers. What do you think? <laughs> I would say go for it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do it. All right, so I'm excited. I <laughs> so I've got my I'm going to use black and make it simple and my number two uh, brush in the back take a bit off so I'm going to do like a spooky ghostly face mm. yeah. there we go oh that's cute you totally need, don't need to do this, but <laughs> she it's, said earlier, and I was like, I'm going to do it. <laughs> it's kind of giving me Alice in Wonderland vibes. Yeah, yeah. And this one's going to be a bit more evil, maybe. Okay. Okay. It's a bit more spooky, that one. And then I'll go for a pumpkin on this one. And these um this number two is so fine you can almost use it like a pen since mm. terry this class will be on the Faba tv library later this week so if you missed the okay. live at the beginning of it you can again you can watch it on youtube but it will be on Faba tv oh that looks so thank good elizabeth i love it thank you and, uh, okay little highlights in size <laughs> I'm just playing now. <laughs> there we go. We're done. So you could put glitter on this as well if you wanted, but I think I'm probably going to leave it like that. I love it. Do you guys like the class? Everyone that's watching, do, would you would you paint this? I definitely would. I've learned a few tricks already, like where to place the dots when you want to hide your teardrops. 
Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you so, could, yeah, you don't have to do anything white. You could do the stuff in like, you know, orange or something would look quite good or another darker green, something like that. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Self in. Um, I have one question. Would it be possible to teach that other design that you showed me, like on the arm, at least the like just like the skeleton part? I thought yeah, it was really yeah, cool. Sure. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, cool. So I'll get the other arm out. Thank you, Lola. <laughs> <laughs> so two seconds, let me just get my other paint. Um so I will just let me just get all the noise away. Because this this design, I honestly loved it when you showed it to me, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you got it, you got to teach it. <laughs> I think everyone's going to appreciate this one. So I have become obsessed um, with this stencil, and it's from a company called Pop Stencils, and they're in the UK. And Jilly and Child, lovely Jilly and Child, put started using it, and I was like, oh, I have got to get that stencil. It's so good. So I'm not going to use the mermaid. I just like the um, the sun bit with the lines in, and it and it's just brilliant for. It works really well in the middle of the head, forehead um, and then you put the mermaid over the top. But I'm, I love it for arm designs because it just gives you a background and then you can paint over the top. So I'm going to be using that and I'm going to use one of Leanne's colours. So you can see I've used them quite a bit. <laughs> um, yeah. Fusion I don't know which really one. This awesome. is, yeah, this huh? is the butterfly palette. And it, everybody loves these colours. So... Just got my sponge, which I've just the baby sponge, which I've cut up. And they work as well as any other sponges, I think. Mm -hmm. so just loading that so you've got a nice colour on it. And then I always, when I load it up, I always just take a bit off on the towel so that it's not too runny. I think especially with stencils that have been caught out like that before where they just run and bleed and it's, oh. and it's, and it's and then, a mess. And then your heart just cries. You're like, I work so yeah, hard. Yeah, <laughs> and it's ruined. Right, so it's, it's a bit wet. So I'm going to dab it off on the towel. And so you want like a sunset effect and the blue at the bottom and the purple at the top. That. And then if you think it's like, I can see it's a little bit wet there. So if you think it's a bit wet, you can just turn your sponge over and go back over it and it'll mm. take a bit off. Hopefully this will be all right. If this bleeds, it might bleed, but if it doesn't, it should be. Okay. Oh, it's a little bit, but that's okay. I'm going to cover that bit up anyway. <laughs> go with it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so... And I'm going to use a silly farm cake, which is um, Aussie Mermaid, for this next bit. And this is just that half inch brush again. Nice. And this is a lovely colour. I love this. This is great for mermaids and sea type things. And uh, what's that split cake called? Oh, so Aussie Mermaids. This is a silly farm cake. Okay. Oh, it's really, it's just a nice combination. So I'm going to try and pick up a little bit of that black. And the green. So you've got that circle, so it's nice to use that circle shape. So I'm just going to press down at the bottom, go around the circle, and up like that. Get enough on there. And then this is almost like the C part. So it will get more Halloween in a minute. <laughs> Gotta trust the process. It <laughs> it's a layer. It's a layering process. <laughs> so go back over that one again. Just sit down. Elizabeth says, Elizabeth Gonzalez, she says, oh. This was fun to try along with you. I'm a total beginner, but you made it relatively simple to follow along live. Thank you for a great tutorial. Oh, thank you. I like That's simple. <laughs> oh my gosh, me too. When it's complicated, I'm like, yeah, no, I can't. I'll, I'm just going to pass. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's got to be something that you can, I mean, I really admire people who can paint detailed stuff, but I, I just, 
I, I just like to do stuff that I can paint on the job as well that you know that you can recreate exactly because you only have five minutes or less other than that like yeah. it's not gonna look yeah. that good <laughs> so it's just a series of swirly whirly bits really that's how I can describe it and they're all okay you going know, up to that talking bit. talking about yeah. swirly whirlies those candies are amazing the what sorry the 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 candy the chocolate swirly whirlies they're so good oh we don't have them here <laughs> I've never heard of those. No? I thought it was a British no. candy. It's from Ireland, oh, I think. You have all completely different stuff, I think. Is it? Is it British? <laughs> I've never heard of it. And never mind then. I, I take it back. <laughs> okay. Yeah, when we I, I think it's Curly Whirly. Oh, Curly Whirly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> I like Swirly Whirly better, but yeah. Curly Whirly. Yeah. No, they're, yeah, they're cool. Yeah. We used to, when we were kids, we used to see if we could get the whole thing on in one go. Oof. <laughs> right. So now I've got a, sorry, I've got a tag. This is Magpie. Um, just got, this is another cool, this is, another, I'm not sponsored by Silly Farm, but <laughs> <laughs> I just love this brush as well. So this is a, this is Beautiful Butterfly and it's a Cameron Garrett brush and it's just so fine. It's brilliant for little details. I love it. Yeah, I have that brush and I literally just bought another one because yeah. it, it has to be one of my favorite smaller angle brushes I've ever owned. It's brilliant. It's so fine and you can do really tiny little things with it. And I have about five. <laughs> so I'm just loading that. And I'm going to do a flamingo. So I'm just no, look, let me put on that so I can't see because of the camera. So I'm starting here and it's going to be a little head that comes around like that. And then because it's so fine, you can just do little things like that with it, which is really cool. And then the body is going to go like a swoop over. So this is not an nowhere near anatomically correct. <laughs> so I realised that if this was a skeleton, it wouldn't have this sort of fluffy back. But um, I just I tried it the other way, and I just I think it looks better this way. And just to clarify, is this a flamingo? Yes. Yes. Okay. So so just creating like a shadowy background bit. Gotcha. So you just fill that in with the back of the brush and just go back over it if it's smudgy. Okay, fill that bit in. And then because this is slowed up a bit, and you can do the legs with it as well. So you can do one leg coming down like that and then just stamp. Mm. Down, oh, I can there we go, so that's its legs. And then do the beak. So you can just you can almost like draw with this brush because it's so fine, it's brilliant. You can turn it on its end and it's really pointy and then you can Yeah, and, and using the less brushes okay. the better, honestly. Yeah, definitely. So that's the mer that's mermaid. What am I talking about? The flamingo shape. <laughs> Lost it. Am I right? Do you want me to do the skeleton bit or should I just carry on doing the whole thing? Have I got time? Yeah, I do the skeleton bit, yeah. please. Okay, cool. I'm excited. So just let that dry for a little bit. Is it dry enough? Yeah. Actually, while that dries, I'll just show you I was playing about with design. So this is so you could do this for um the face as well. So do the circle bit and then do the skeleton in the middle. Um, and it works quite well in the face as well. I'm digging it. <laughs> so number two brush into the white DFX. There's his little beak. That comes around. Give him a bit of an 
evil eye. So, so for the skull part, you're practically just filling everything in with white except for the eye. Yeah, but leave a little bit of a, a, leave a bit of edge on it, so you can see oh, a bit of the black. Okay. And then this neck bone that comes down. Again, this is probably not perfect, <laughs> <laughs> but. but it looks awesome. Yeah, you just get the effect. And I think you could do this for anything. So you could do a dolphin and switch up for Halloween, do your normal dolphin and the in grey and black. And then you could do this over the top where you think the oh, that's the genius. skeleton would be. Okay. A little bit. So that's, the, yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> You could do that in the middle of the forehead on like a crown would look quite cool. And then you could do, um, I'm into tropical paints. If you look at my Instagram, it's full of things. I think I'm hankering for a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go somewhere hot. <laughs> I'm painting everything tropical. Um, That's funny. And then, And just do a little over the top, like palm tree, like fronds. And you're using a number two brush for this? Yeah. Okay. Just flicking it out. So just so that you get the idea. It's not perfect palm tree, but it just gives you the idea that like a sort of silhouette. Um, like that. And then, again, I'll go back and use my beloved stencil so I could just do a few at the top. But, and then a bigger one. Yeah. Maybe have a disaster. <laughs> just got to play it cool. Be like, I, yeah, yeah. it was I intended. Meant that. Yeah, I meant to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay and then my friend amanda gave me a really good idea she, to go in and make it a bit more spooky so you can either let that dry and then go back over with the stencil with the black and offset it mm. which would make it look sort of spooky or you could go in and i like them like that like that. I'm learning so much from you today. This is oh, awesome. <laughs> there we go. And then probably just do a bit of line work at the bottom in black. So uh, you could use a number two or number three. And I always start with a swirl because it's just I just find it easy if you're doing something underneath if you just do a swirl first like that, then you can do everything oh, my brush just got really gloopy sorry and you, everything else can come off from that point right. Mm -hmm. You can do one going on there. And flip back. You can make that one a double swirl. Right. And for those that are new to face painting, you mentioned the double swirl. When would you use a regular swirl and when would you use a double swirl, in your opinion? Um... I don't know really <laughs> just i just look at it and think maybe it, because it it needs a bit of a gap filler there you know it's this where we've got the gap between the two bits of one stroke um it just looked a bit plain so i would just put a double swirl in and mm. just filling in gaps really it just it just sort of just makes start sense. with yeah just start with the swirl and then see where you can add other spaces but sometimes we can you can do too many 
swirls and <laughs> flicks and then it all gets a bit hectic. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember when I first started face painting and I had no idea how to place teardrops and swirls. So I would just place them randomly. And my yes. God, did they look terrible. <laughs> yeah, they've got to be towards your focal points or, yeah. Kind of all going to one point or yeah, that's how I like to do them anyway. So there we go. And then to finish off, you can do some trusty dots. <laughs> Back with a number four brush and then you see this area here is a bit messy so finish it off and it also brings the white in onto the green color and then this side because you can see here you can move that around as well do one there like that and then you could do well see i'm going to get carried away now you can go off and do too many there we go. And that's oh, it. so good. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I love it. Glitter on, but so you could this could be you could do this on the cheek as well, which would look really cool. And you could do that green swirl going up over the eye. And the possibilities what? are endless. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. And I think at least for myself, I could only speak for myself. Uh, the classes that you taught, well, the designs that you taught today were fantastic. You did it so thoroughly. You took your time to explain and hopefully it helped everyone that was watching this video. It definitely helped me. I'm going to be doing these designs sometime in the near future. And I truly, truly want to say thank you so much for taking the time to teach these live today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It was a bit nerve-wracking, but got there. <laughs> I couldn't even tell. He did so good. Oh, thank you. No, sorry. Thank and, you. And um, before I let you go, for people that don't follow you on Instagram, do you want to tell what it is? Yeah, so it's a sparkle face underscore face painting. And it is right there below Seriously, you guys are not missing out. I mean, you guys will be missing out if you don't follow her. Follow <laughs> and you will get your inspiration. So thank again, you. thank you so much, Elizabeth. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and that is it for our live class today hosted by Faba TV. For those that did miss the live, it will be in the Faba TV library later on this week. Do not forget to subscribe to Faba TV if you haven't already because Elizabeth has some fantastic Halloween arm design classes on her channel in Faba TV, along with there are 700 plus classes on Faba TV by over 200 international instructors. Faba TV is the biggest face paint library in the world, along with henna, airbrushing, balloons, business, SEO, and everything in between. You're missing out if you do not subscribe. That is it for our class today. Hopefully you guys learned something and I will see all of you guys next time.